right here. Um, if I'm approaching zero from the right side, do you guys remember that? The zero and the plus sign? Approaching zero from the right side of the graph. Okay, we have two parts of this function. We have an x and a natural log of x. And so let's think of them, um, let's think of them separately. Uh, if I have a, the linear function, what is, uh, what is the, what is, what are we approaching as we approach zero? We're approaching zero. Okay, so this would be zero times, uh, and then we have this natural log thing right here. Um, what, what are we approaching as we approach zero for a natural log graph? See, we're, we're going this way, right? And because we're going this way towards the zero, and this arrow right here is pointing down to infinity. Will it ever, 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 ever get to zero? No. no, it will never, ever, 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 ever get to zero. So we have zero times infinity. That's a problem. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That is uh, indeterminate form. Yay! Okay, but we do have a problem right here. Is this a fraction? No. No, it's not a fraction. Can I rewrite it to be a fraction? Sure. Of course you can. That's why you asked. Shut up. Okay, so we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side. I'm now going to write it as natural log of x over x raised to the negative 1 power. Wait, can you do that? Yeah, I can. I just drop the x down below the natural log, and I have to change the power on the x. Right now, the power is a positive 1, but we don't see it because it's a 1. 1 is a ninja. Ninjas can go invisible. All right, so now we have a... Uh, a fraction. Can we now use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative to the top and the take the derivative to the bottom? Heck yeah, Fulio Bulios. All right, let's take the derivative of the top. We get 1 over x. The derivative of the bottom, we drop this negative 1, so we get negative 1 multiplying to the x, and then we take 1 away from the negative 1 to get negative 2. Man, that looks disgusting. All right, but can we do our simplification action? Heck yeah, Fulio Bulios. All right, now I don't need to write this one right here. So I have a negative x with a negative 2 power. What can I do to that x now? Pop them. We can put them back up. So we can put them up here, put them right up here. So now he's a negative x raised to the second power multiplying to the 1 over x. Do you guys know what you get when you multiply the 1 over x times a negative 1 x squared? You get negative x squared over x. Do you guys know what that simplifies to? Uh, negative x. Now I'm taking the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of this. Oh, that's so beautiful. What do we get? So unsatisfying, right? So 0 is the least satisfying answer that you would get. OK, now some. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, some might uh, be kind of confused. Like, how come you can do this? How come you can just drop that x down there and put a negative 1 power on it? Well, check this out. If I had a 2 times a 5, I can... Shut up. <laughs> I can rewrite this as 5 over 2 raised to the negative 1 power. That's the same thing I just did. Now I'm going to prove it. This is the same as 5 divided by 2 to the negative 1 power which would then be the same as 5 divided by 1 over 2 because we don't like negative exponents, so we can drop him and make him a fraction, which now you can probably see that would be the same as 5 times 2 because whenever you're dividing a fraction, you multiply it by the reciprocal, so that would be 2 over 1, which is just 2. Yeah? Good? All right. Thanks again, Destiny.